We all sort of know what aging is on a big scale. You know, there's a characteristic set of changes. Your hair gets gray, you're, you uh, don't have the same level of energy. The rates of almost all diseases goes up with aging. But what we've started to learn is that in addition to these changes, that there are changes uh, internally to each cell in your body, and in particular uh, to the marks that are controlling which genes that get expressed. The next big piece in this is this idea of reprogramming, so so-called Yamanaka factors. These are genes that are expressed in stem cells. The specific set of, of factors are cocktails of two or three or four factors that you overexpress. When you use these Yamanaka factors, you lose the identity of a cell, turn it back to a stem cell, and you reset the molecular clock. Two things were happening when you reprogrammed or dedifferentiate a cell to a stem cell using the Yamanaka factors. The first and the obvious one is you change it from being a differentiated cell like a skin cell to uh, being a stem cell that is pluripotent that can make all the other cells in your body. The second though is that it forgets the age of the animal that it came from. So you can take a skin cell fibroblast from a old mouse when you go through this dedifferentiation process with the Yamanaka factors. Uh, the lifespan of the mouse that you generate has no memory of the age that from which it came from. What we'd like to do is more effectively reset the molecular clock without having the cells lose their identity because that would give you the potential of restoring or rejuvenating cells in situ in a person or in an animal. The idea of Perturb-Seq really came from two advances in technology. One is uh, CRISPR technology, which suddenly made it possible to change genes, turn them on, turn them off, uh, in mammalian cells and to do this at a very large scale. The other big advance was advances in uh, single cell technologies that allow us to look at individual cells and their internal states, which genes they're expressing. And the approach really went back when I was at UCSF. Aviv Regev and I were friends and colleagues and we started talking about the potential of combining CRISPR with single cell technology. Uh, to have a new way of looking at the gene function in this massively parallel way. And so our labs worked on different pieces of this, sort of in parallel, and then came together uh, in two papers published in 2016. I'm Ruben. I'm a grad student in Jonathan's lab, and I've been working with the Perturb-Seq technology for a couple of years. For the past 10 years, CRISPR has been making an enormous difference in laboratory biology. It's really drastically accelerated our ability to uh, search through the human genome uh, in, in a laboratory context and figure out the functions of you know, each of the, the 20,000 human genes. What we were then combining was the ability to use CRISPR in each cell to change a different gene, turn on and off a different gene, with single cell approaches that allowed us to see in each of these cells what the effect of that change was. And in this way we were able to do thousands and now millions of experiments in parallel uh, in a single test tube. You measure the full transcriptome, but you also measure the identity of the, of the, of the guide RNA. And then you can kind of go in, in post-processing after you've done this experiment, you know, do the analysis to really link the, the genotypes which you, you make with these guide RNAs with the phenotypes. So what we'd like to do is use this perturb-seq approach in which we can have each cell have a different set of cocktail factors and then look at how for each cocktail we try in each cell, how effective it was at losing the identity versus the rejuvenation. And because we can do hundreds of thousands or even millions of single cell experiments at once, with each cell having its own cocktail, we can search through the space of combinations uh, much more effectively. I'm excited by the, the ability of Perturb-Seq to power analyses that are just sort of totally unexpected. It's such a rich data set that once you have it, you can just kind of keep keep working in it. You can keep going back to it over and over again, six months or a year after you did the experiment. What do we hope to do? What do we hope to achieve with this? The first and simplest thing is we we're trying to understand what are the factors that control the age of our cells, what causes this molecular clock to move forward, and how can we reverse it? And that, I think, is just answering, you know, one of the most profound questions in biology, and one that, you know, I think is immediate to everyone and to the human uh, state, which is, you know, why, why do we age?